But then you have Calvin, he doesn't come to faith until maybe a year before Zwingli's death, just to keep things in perspective. So Calvin was trained as a lawyer, and, but as he was trained in the lawyer, he, you know, God says he reduced his heart to teachableness. He, he recognized that he needed to understand who God was, he understood who God was, and Calvin's great effect on the Reformation is he systematized theology. He actually said God is orderly, and so he ordered all the thoughts that were floating out there. And this was a big deal, and it, you know, we talk about the five points of Calvinism, but that wasn't Calvin's main point. Calvin's main point is all things were made through God for God. And so everything is about God and not about man. That was the big shift that Calvin makes. The other people are talking about like predestination, like you know, God's sovereignty, God being sovereign, but Calvin says God is sovereign in all things because he has made all things for him, for himself. And so that changes, if all things are made for God, then that changes how you look at everything else because it's not man that's driving everything else, it's God that's driving everything else. So therefore it's possible to systematize it. And it's really Colossians 1.16, right? All things were created through him and for him. So he comes to faith around 1530. The Reformation's starting, the persecution's happening, and so he ends up fleeing to Basel. He feels very guilty when he flees to Basel because he's going, there's other people are dying for their faith, and here I am, I'm running to Switzerland. So what he does, because he sees the persecution that's happening in France, is he writes the Institutes, the Institutes of Christian Religion. They're written to the King of France to say, stop persecuting the Christians who are called Huguenots. Don't persecute the Huguenots in France because the Huguenots are, they are the true faith. They are not rejecting the word of God. And so the Institutes are written as a plea to the king to stop persecuting the church in France. Um, <coughs> he then goes to Italy and ends up going back to France to try to settle his father's estate with his brother. 1536, he actually ends up in Geneva and that's when Farrell tells him to stay in the city. But I think it's 1535 that the Council of Geneva votes to have this city be reformed. Like I said, in Switzerland, it's not a monarchy where the monarch says this will be reformed or this will be Roman Catholic. In Switzerland, it's the council of the representatives in each city that decides whether they'll be reformed or Roman Catholic. And so in Geneva, it's called the Council of 200. And when he gets forced out, when Calvin gets forced out and goes to Strasbourg in 1538, it's because the Council of 200, the votes change, right? Calvin comes in, he's preaching the Word of God, he's doing expository preaching sequentially through the scriptures, and this starts to offend people. That offense causes political changes, those political changes, they vote to throw Calvin out because the church at this point, like I said yesterday, you had the kings and the popes, they were equal. As soon as you knock down the pope, the state thinks it's superior, so it's driving the church and telling the church what to do. The big issue that causes him to be thrown out is again the Lord's Supper. As you go through this, one of the themes is think how seriously they take the Lord's Supper compared to how the church in America and in other places in the world takes the Lord's Supper today. They have almost no consideration, but, but you go to Huss, you go to Luther, you go to Zwingli, you go to, to Calvin, all these people, they're having these major issues where they're willing to sacrifice their pastorate, they're willing to sacrifice all kinds of things over the issue of the Lord's Supper. His big issue is that the Lord's Supper, because the church has a separate jurisdiction, they're the ones who decide to excommunicate. In Geneva, the Council of 200 is saying, we have the right to excommunicate. We'll decide who comes to the table and who doesn't come to the table. Calvin says that's not the right of the state, that's the right of the church. Because of that, he gets forced out and goes to Strasbourg. He returns in 1541, and he famously starts in the next passage of scripture. And of course, Calvin is very smart. He's also very pragmatic, and part of that is to say, you can't fight against the Word of God. So he's just continuing and to show that the Word of God will be successful in the end. And so he ends up continuing the Reformation. You know, modern commentaries, they come from Calvin. When we think of, of modern preaching, that comes from Calvin. The, Calvin is very, very much ends up changing how, how we do church today. And one of the other things that he did is he created what was called the consistory. The consistory is made up of the pastors of the churches and lay elders, and they would come together and they would say, in this particular case, what's the right biblical application? And they would have authority from the Council of 200 to pass judgments even. So they would, you know, they could do penalties and there were certain things they could do. They couldn't put anybody to death, but they were, so there's still this confusion of where the church and the state should be. 
but still the consistory is saying the church has its own separate authority, which was correct, but all these things are shaking out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com for more videos and other resources.